Hello, prop nerds and everybody else. Adam Savage at Prop Store with Brandon Allinger. Good morning, sir. Hey, good to see you. We are wearing white gloves, which means we're going to touch precious things. Um, and specifically, we have a sword in front of us. It is a magnificent sword. What is this from? Tim Curry's sword from Legend, the 1986 Ridley Scott fantasy film. Dude, dudes and dudettes, if you haven't seen Legend, it is a fever dream and it's kind of an amazing artifact. Um, we, we lived and breathed it in 86 when it came out. We were listening to that soundtrack by Tangerine Dream with Brian Ferry singing Is Your Love Strong Enough all over the credits, like for years. This is really beautiful. Have you have have you seen this before? Is this the first time you've encountered this? I actually piece? have seen at least one other mm -hmm. uh, sort of darkness in the past. I don't think I've seen this particular one, but it's so recognizable, so unique. I mean, it's actually I assume they sculpted this out of clay and then cast it in fiberglass. It's a really unique looking sword. It is, and Tim Curry <clears throat> plays the villain in the film, and he is effectively like an eight foot tall version of Satan. It right. is one of the great bits of monster makeup that's ever been. Rob Latine, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, famously, apparently, the makeup covered him so completely, the only part of him that was exposed to air was his lower lip. Okay. Like, even his eyelids had prosthetic yeah. eyelids on them. Great character design. Incredible great, great character makeup. design. We actually had a stop-motion puppet of that character in our London office for many years. People used to come in and go, what is that? Because, you know, Legend may be a little bit more obscure as it's, a title. It's pretty obscure. But a lot of great design in it. Oh, so much. Meg Mucklebones, mm. done famously. I was remember. That, yeah. Phil, that was uh, Rick Baker, if I remember. Was it Rick Baker? I could be wrong. Or maybe, uh, I think Nick Dudman worked on that movie. I'm. I'm it's been yeah. a long time since I read that. Sin effects, but this is so of a piece of Kari's character, right? Yes. He's sort of like he is. He plays darkness, right? Which, as you say, basically the devil. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, now I have looked over a lot of swords in my time, and I, I can I. I'd like to talk about some of the things about this one that Please. I think are really lovely. Um, I think you're right. I think this is sculpted out of a piece of clay. Um, but one of the things that Hollywood swords have tended to do is ignore the history of swords. Okay. And this one doesn't. I feel like, I, if I, forgive me sword experts, but this feels roughly like a Viking type O handle and pommel and grip arrangement. Um, Mike Mignola, I feel like, was inspired by this for a lot of swords that uh, showed up in Hellboy. Yeah. And now even Excalibur that, from the new Hellboy film is is referring, referring to this. and. You know, what, what is typo? What is this? Well, is so uh, within the within the history of swords, there are several classification systems for um, different styles of grip, uh, uh, of grip, guard, and pommel, uh, and and blade shape and blade type. And uh, one of them, one of the systems, is made by Oakshot, who uh, covers hundreds of years of blades. And then Viking swords are their whole own classification system because okay. they had really sophisticated metallurgy for a long time and the shape of these things went through different fashions yeah and there's a way in which this feels like it is really referring with knowledge to the history of sword making to, to deliver this and even when you look close up there's some beautiful like Celtic knot patterns or sort of Viking knot patterns going on in some of the add-ons. And now that you're saying it, is this extra detailing laid in, these rings that I, are sort of sitting on the I think you're right. The handle? I think they might be what looks like some kind of filigree. Etch brass? Is it this could more, be. Is, is, is this the day of etch it's brass? It's a day of etch brass. <laughs> it certainly could be. And I, I also, yeah, so you see that that is almost the legendary logo. Uh-huh. Right? Yeah, that right. famous braided legendary logo. Yeah. Um, That's there, where they got it. That's there are so it. many ways in which this feels like a character more than just a weapon. Yeah, right. And it's fiberglass. Yes, heavy, oh, heavy. It, no, it's actually not, not very heavy yeah. at all. Weighs about probably six or seven pounds. But at the huge. Most. But a massive sword. Gargantuan and also a like a lot of screen presence. It feels like it was grown rather than made. I'm right? just noticing there's something handwritten on here. Yeah, I was trying to read that. I, I, that looks like an H at the beginning. Yeah. It looks like there's an O, but I don't. I can't put any of these letters together. P O U R is that what the last four letters are? Yeah, I don't know. That's fascinating. I mean, you know, this may have been the type of thing that was in a prop rental house, kicking around in the UK for a number of years. And there's a couple of be... other sharpie lines in uh, yeah, here. Yeah, there's yeah, a yeah. Little, yeah. Uh, I, I see it there. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. um, 
And some of that, like you said, some of these props get made, they get sent back to the prop house that made them and then used in dozens of productions over years. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Especially something like a sword. You know, this is yeah. just a big fantasy sword. And that time, and you know, 1986, film made in the UK, they probably were not archiving the assets. They probably no. had like a parking lot sale at the end of it when it was done. And it may have just been, hey, who wants the swords? Send them to a prop house. This you know? is a time in history when there were pieces of 2001 set dressing that were showing up in the background of Doctor Who. Oh, right. Right. Yes, <laughs> yes, yeah. Reuse. 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 Yeah. Um, I, it's so funny. I, I, I get very picky about my swords. And I was surprised when I saw the picture of this one, how beautiful I thought it was. Mm. I really want to make one of these. Now, how would you do it? Would you sculpt it? Yeah, I would probably, I'd probably, uh, I'd probably take pictures, blow it up full size, print it out full size, and then slowly sculpt it from scratch. Yeah, even the blade? Would you sculpt uh, yeah, the blade? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'd, you know, I'd start with a piece of plywood and okay. then build build up around Credits, that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then I would probably go and try and find old bits of vintage filigree detailing um, maybe they cut that out of leather work for the original casting, or mm -hmm. maybe they pulled it out of some bit of, you know, dinnerware. You never know where right. a prop maker might get some of these patterns. It's also interesting that it's clearly broken at some point. I mean, clearly broken, but um, I think the reason it is still together is because uh, no prop maker would have made this without putting a rod up its yeah. middle. So it looks like it might have been cracked, but not, uh, but not sheared. Never, never came fully apart. Yeah. It's just the surface resin. That's cracked, you're saying. And, and the yeah. very uh, crunchy repair job right. is actually fits beautifully with the pieces that it Yes, <laughs> yeah, which may have happened during the film. It may have happened yeah. at, the, at the prop house at some point later. Certainly. Uh, hard to know with this one, but certainly a lot of wear and tear on it. You know, I'm noticing all the scratches up and down the blade. I'm noticing the 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 tip of the sword blade, how scratched and worn it is down there. Yeah. It's, you know, this thing has had a life. It has had a life, and it seems to have been painted with a, a sort of a silver or gray base coat and then a gunmetal overcoat. The weathering has been beautiful. Mm -hmm. You know, it really shows through, especially that, like you're saying, out at the tip. It, again, it's like more of a character mm -hmm. almost than yeah. just a simple weapon. Maybe a reason to go watch Legend again. Uh, or for you, know, you to listen to the soundtrack. Joey was just saying, <laughs> he saw it and found it really weird, and I agree, it is totally weird, but it was so important, I, I want to see it again. You're right, I kind of want to... Go back to that one. It wall. is a classic 80s fantasy film. It is yeah. totally. Uh, may I hold it yes. one more time? Mm -hmm. Oh, this is great. Um, this is very, there, it feels really similar to the most recent Hellboy Excalibur. Okay. Right, this very specifically, that pommel yeah, is I a see super that. Viking kind of moment. Dude, that is, you look really strong too when you're holding yeah, the, light, the yeah. light sword. You look tough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. Uh, Legend is not a piece that shows up a lot in the auctions. No, you know, I've never seen too much material. I remember one collector had an actual uh, makeup head with the horns, which was really wow. impressive. And I think we've had some of Tom Cruise's shoes from Legend, the gold <laughs> shoes that he wears. And somebody had one of the Tom Cruise's tunics, which were really interesting because they are like... Um, yeah, like chainmail. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they were beautiful. Yeah, and I remember there was some kind of story there that the chainmail uh, pieces were almost stamped out of a coin or something interesting. We'll have to get that one in for one of the auctions so we he's can study so it. He's so young in the film. It really? feels like he's yeah. a teenager in right, that movie. Right, right. And you, I don't know. I don't know if Tom Cruise is going to do a movie like that today. <laughs> right. A fan is, you know, right. before Tom Cruise kind of was Tom Cruise and a brand in the way that he is today as a modern action star and he was still doing a range of different projects. You know? It's true. And it's also like Legend stands out there as it's not somebody else's franchise. It's it's totally original and it's amazing how much money they spent. Mm. And, and it's, I feel like all the money is on the screen. Yeah. Like it is a dense world that Ridley yeah. creates in that film. Great practical effects film. Yeah, really great. Um, I'm re I, I hope this draws more legend artifacts out of the woodwork for your next auction because this is a franchise I love talking about. Yeah, well, I agree with you. Uh, we'll find that tunic and we'll let you know. Amazing. We are covering some old school movie props today. I know, it's not that often that we have vintage pieces, but these are original tablets from the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments! So, I, Norm and I were going over your catalog, and I was like, Ten Commandments, and he was like, really? And I'm like, I already have a folder of these. Oh, do you? I have always wanted to make the Ten Commandments from, this is the Cecil B. DeMille, film starring Charlton Heston, famously when he parts the waters of the Red Sea, one of the largest practical effects ever done. Yeah. 
And you, how often is it that you get props from movies from the 40s and the 50s? You know, I would say our focus is generally on the 1970s onward. So mm -hmm. we certainly have had vintage pieces in the past, but it's not that often, especially to have something really significant. So, you know, this is exciting for us. I know there's a couple different sets of these that are out there that have run through auctions before. This has been with a collector. It, it was sold through auction previously. It's now coming up again, but it's the first time that we have handled a Ten Commandments tablet yeah. set uh, and had it available. So here, feel free to. Really? Yeah, let's take a look. What? Oh my God, they're so light. <laughs> okay, that actually answers a question I had, which was, as I touch this and I hear that, this is fiberglass over foam. Yeah. Which makes sense because that's exactly how I, as a prop maker, would have made these dimensional letters. I would have mapped them out, carved them in a foam, and then covered the whole thing with glass and resin. Yeah, that's interesting. So, so do you think if they had multiple sets, each set has had the letters carved by hand as opposed to coming out of a mold? That is a really good question. Um, We'd have to the study thing it. Is, is that these see. don't feel these don't feel like they're a single piece of resin. These uh -huh. don't feel cast to me. Right. But then I'm also going to take these shots home and look at my reference material and see, see what matches. I can screen yeah. match. Because if the dents on these match another set that I've got that seems to be slightly different paint job, I'll be curious. Right. The, um, suggesting it came out of a mold. Yeah, because this doesn't feel like a molded resin, especially from the what, so late 50s? Is that when? I wonder, could they have just cast the faceplate and then applied that onto? Certainly, plausible. Yeah. yeah. But again, I, 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 and I'm un, I'm unversed in how many different resins they had access to right. back in, in the sixties and fifties. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've also, I, I also never don't think of Mel Brooks' History of the World. These fifteen, and he drops one and goes, "Oi, these 10, <laughs> 10 commandments." <laughs> Funnily enough, I feel like I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Wait, wait, wait. Some of these One, must run together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There you go. Must Maybe. Be yeah. I want to we'll translate them now, too, and find out if they really say what they should be saying. Try uh, Google Translate on your phone. Um, I, <laughs> <laughs> my God, ancient Greek. Um, also, look at this up close. While this looks really well like marble, and they've done this nice sort of glossy finish, this is actually dots of paint. And I believe these are tossed from a brush. You take this, you tap your brush against something that throws dots of paint. You can see kind of lines coming here. You, you sometimes put it in different orientations so you don't get too much of a consistency mm, on the paint job. Makes sense. And fascinating how different the finishes are between the two tablets. I have always been surprised by the fact that they're so radically differently finished. And you see that on camera, huh? Yeah, you yeah. really do. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, I can't, I'm so delighted to have to, to have these in front of me because like I said, I've always wanted to replicate this prop. It's a spectacular bit of film history. This one here you can see there's oh. been some sort of brackets applied at some time, I'm sure to hang on someone's wall. We know these trace to a studio executive. Um, okay. That was the original source of these. So they do have some interesting history with them as well. It's curious that that one has a bracket and this doesn't. I, I wonder if they were separated could and came be a back mismatch together. Set. Yeah. yeah. And, and maybe that's contributing a bit to the finish as well. Yeah. That's um, something that uh, we've been to museum shows that brought together pieces that had not seen each other for hundreds of years, pieces of armor. Uh, you must do this a lot, get to join together things that were made for the same production, but haven't been together. We do. And, and you know, collectors are trying to do that. There's collectors who are going, I have this costume, but I need X piece of it. Is it ever going to turn up, you know? Um, I want to say, after six or seven decades, I'm really impressed with how good the paint job still looks. Yeah, yeah. You know, the the white on the inside where it's carved out is just like feels completely genuine, like carved by an old tool. That's that uh, Hardy's toxic 1950s <laughs> paint that you're looking exactly, at. Exactly, yeah. I'm sure. It's, it's here it's to like stay. It's like radium yeah. and kitten paws. It's here to stay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brandon, I. I love your focus on the 70s and onwards, but it's a real treat to see something from the early days of Hollywood. Just classic age. and a treat for us. You know, it's because it's been so many years since these films were made. Yeah. You don't get to meet people who worked on them. You don't find someone who, say, worked on the Ten Commandments and has this in their garage. Yeah. It's really only stuff that is circulating within the collector ecosystem. So we were really happy to, to have these come in for the next auction. Amazing. Greek scholars, please, in the comments, let us know how well these letters translate. I think that's Greek. That, that's 
anyway. We're going to try Google Translate. We're going to try back. Google yeah. Translate. Thank you guys. Brandon, thank you so much. What Good a, to see you. What a treat. Thank you so much for watching that video. Your support allows us to make more of this great content. If you'd like to help us on a deeper level, even head over to tested-store.com because we've got stickers. Who doesn't love stickers? Our anime-inspired tested logo in Japanese. Follow the process, not the plan. It's not a process. It's not a problem to solve, it's a process to manage other aphorisms that have come from my mouth. Um, and we have just made a full set of our demerit badges in sticker form. So you can cover your toolbox with all of your screw-ups and celebrate it with other makers. Thank you guys so much. See you next time.